Eagle County. I'm James, Education and Outreach Coordinator for Eagle River Watershed Council. Welcome to our virtual edition of Watershed Ed. I'm here at Brush Creek getting ready to do week one's macroinvertebrate survey and inventory. Macro means that these aquatic insects are large enough to see with the naked eye and don't need to be seen with a magnifying glass or a microscope. Invertebrates means that they don't have a backbone. Macroinvertebrates are primary consumers and they consume all the algae and dead and decaying matter within a stream for food. They also provide food for most of our fish and other aquatic life. Macroinvertebrate studies are used by scientists and policymakers to determine the health of a river and surrounding riparian zone. Both the river and riparian zone rely on each other in order to thrive. Here in Eagle County, there are 270 species of wildlife that rely on the riparian zone or the river at some point in their life, but it only makes up 2% of the land in our county. It's really important to make sure that our rivers are healthy so that our riparian zones are healthy. At this point, you might be wondering, what threatens a river? What makes a river unhealthy? There are a lot of different things that can make a river unhealthy, but the main threats here are development, invasive species, chemicals and pollutants found in runoff, climate change, and headwater forest health. Now, let's go find out what gear we need to do our own macroinvertebrate study and see if our rivers are healthy. There are a lot of fancy materials you can use to make a macroinvertebrate study more efficient, but all you really need are a few household items that you probably already have. One of those items is an old toothbrush that you've cleaned to remove any toothpaste left over or any oil that you might have used to clean off your mouth. Another thing that you need is an ice cube tray that we're going to use to collect the macroinvertebrates. A helpful item to have would be a notebook so you can record what macroinvertebrates you've found. And I would also recommend some form of water shoe, whether it's Chaco or waders like I'm wearing. There are three main methods for collecting macroinvertebrates. And the first is using your hands to dig into the stream bed and stir up the macroinvertebrates that are down in the stream bed. The second one is using your feet to shuffle along the bottom, also stirring up all of those bugs that are stuck down in the rocks. Both of those require a D-net like this one, which I'm assuming most of you don't have. So our third technique is the one that we use a toothbrush, and we find a rock in the stream, pick it up, and use our toothbrush to gently rub the macroinvertebrates off of them directly into our ice cube tray for the inventory that we're gonna do right after this. As you can see, I filled the ice cube tray with water from the river, and now I'm gonna go into the stream and collect a rock that I think might have some macroinvertebrates on it. Be careful to not go in water too deep and you want to keep it to about mid-cap. You can see this is a pretty good one. There's a bunch of little creepy crawlies hanging out on here. That one I think is a caddisfly, but we'll do an ID later. Now we're gonna use our toothbrush to gently brush these macroinvertebrates into the ice cube tray. That's a lot of macroinvertebrates. Make sure you put this back in the stream so that other macroinvertebrates can call it home. All right, now that we've spent the time and collected all of our macroinvertebrates, we can run through this dichotomous key that I provided in the lesson plan. Um, to figure out what macroinvertebrates we found here today at Brush Creek. Um, I went through it myself and found a bunch of these guys, these midge flies, which are tolerant species. So they tend to be able to handle a lot more pollutants than other ones. I found a couple right here in this little ice cube cubby. A couple stone flies, which are some of our sensitive species, and those ones cannot handle environmental pollutants. This really doesn't tell the whole picture because uh, this method doesn't collect all of the environmental, um, all the macroinvertebrates rather here in the river. It just captures a few of them that like to live on rocks. So this doesn't give a holistic health of the watershed, but it certainly gets us close to a bunch of these little critters and gives us some insight into what's going on. Our next step, once we've got all of our macroinvertebrates collected and counted, we wanna make sure these guys get back into our creek that we pulled them from. Put them back in their home. Make sure you've collected all of the other gear that you've used from your toothbrush, your waders, water bottles, anything that you might have brought to the stream with you. Make sure you collect all of that. And if you see any trash, pick that up. We want to make our rivers clean and, you know, we like to leave things cleaner than we found them, right? Hey, Eagle County, thanks so much for tuning in to our first virtual watershed ed. We're going to have these posted every week on our YouTube channel and shared on our Instagram. Please subscribe at outreach at erwc.org or consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you like this video and want to see more of them, consider donating to the Watershed Council and support programming like this one. See you guys next week.